now the part 2 of our series of video tutorial about tennis sliding sign calculations. So let's go now and continue. So we were going to copy now these floodlights to the other side of the court. So just click the floodlights and control C and then control V. And now you have this one and then place your floodlight here. And let's see how it looks like now. And then, of course, you need to open the calculation points first because this is not edited yet. Or actually, we can just copy it. But yeah, let's do it again. 2.5 by 2.5 grid and then horizontal. And then say that the display values is current and then real time in the zero. So there you go. It ha we have now three. And see, the uniformity becomes lesser now because um, the other area has been affected by the other court. So now the lux value becomes uh, 400 lux, but the uniformity is much, much, much um, uglier because it's only 0.53. And now the light is concentrating on this middle part of the court because of that twin floodlights so if we're going to move it here now and see how it goes again it's 0.53 and the uh, the last values become higher so I, I use the 2 kilowatt and if you want to light or do the calculation simultaneously simultaneously with these two chords then I think we need to change the uh, wattage into one kilowatt but if you want to run a calculation with a single chord first then um, yeah the two kilowatt is fine so in my suggestion ask the client if um, because you know you can just play the chord with one 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 chord is open and the other one is court uh, the other one is closed because nobody's playing there so um, if and if there's a control then it's much better because they can just turn it turn on and off or maybe they just just can they just can switch on and off that area but uh, because we are considering the lighting calculation for one court first because what if the other court is turned off then the last value is not enough so we will stick to the two kilowatt because otherwise uh, once the other court is closed, then yeah, last level on the court that is open is not enough. So yeah, um, I would like to suggest to better uh, s send the calculation result into one court first, and then if the client asks for the whole area calculation or for the whole course, for maybe there's another course on the other sides, and then of course it affects the other also if it's like that. And you know what, if there's another court or like football field beside this tennis court and some of the football field's light um, scattered through, through, towards this area, then it again affects the light value on that one, uh, on, the, on the tennis court. So, yeah, this is how, the way we do the lighting calculation for a tennis court. So, okay, we achieved now our class 3 requirements for the tennis court and uh, let's see if we can adjust this uniformity let's go and tilt it into something like maybe 10 degrees and oh, okay so it's not good so yeah I think this is fine um, so you better decide whether you will submit the calculation per single court or for the whole court itself so it depends so now let's go and uh, achieve now the lux level requirements for class 2 which is 300 lux and which is yeah we already had <laughs> it's actually too much now and but the uniformity the, re the requirements for uniformity is uh, 0.7 so let's go and try uh, deleting this one first and see yeah, so this one, when we deleted the other floodlights of the other court, 
it shows 264 points and then 64 which is for class uh, 3. Now we will go to the class 2 that is supposed to be 300 lux and of course 0. 0.7. If we duplicate this one, for example, we will make it 2. Where's my arrangement? This is, will be 2 pieces. Then now I have one here. Oops. I think we need to split that one. Okay, let's go and split it. And then move the other one to the side. Like this. And you can see that the other one is also like... Uh, the other side is also moved. So now it's 536 and 0.66 lakhs. If you can see that some of the mask has a nice bracket. So it should be... Let's say, let's measure it, how far it is from each other. Okay, 0.7. Okay, let's go and make it maybe point or 1 meter. So let's like that. And now it's uh, 0.65. And we will find out where is the maximum. So the maximum part is here. Why it's not? Okay, 6.74. 674 and the lowest level of calculation is here at the side so 349 so in that case then um, we need to adjust or tilt this second floodlight maybe into something else like maybe negative 10 and see how it goes so it's now 0.62 and if we make it 0.5 Ah, uh, 5 degree, it's much better actually. Okay, so oh, we have problem because the light is concentrating on this part now. And um, if we really want to achieve this one, then maybe we need to put the floodlights only in the middle. So now if it's class 2, then we will be needing uh, 6 uh, poles. So let's go and... Um, remove one pole so it will be only mirror vertically yes so if we place this floodlight into the middle part then we will have yes point um, 47 and then if we tilt it into something like negative 10 okay so it's point 0.5 not good this is not good Okay, but then if we move it again, let's say make it also again mirror, and then place the floodlight instead of inside, make it outside. I think this is much better. So if we move the floodlights inside, outside, and then maybe... Um, Okay, so this is the lowest part now, which is not good. This point sixty-two, then two point ninety-nine, and the tilt is negative five. I'm oh, sorry, five degree tilt, and it will become point sixty-five. Lowest is in this corner. Okay, okay, and then if we aim this floodlight towards a little to the center, let's make it 100 here. No, this is 80. There you go. What will be the effect? Ah, uh, this is not much. It's uglier. And then if we tilt it into maybe negative 10 or 10 degrees. Uh, this is also not good. So let's go and return it into that one. And then, okay. So we just need to play it more and maybe um, change the wattage uh, this one into one kilowatt. But just worry, it's not good because maybe the installer may interchange the um, the lumps. Or something lamps is okay but uh, okay um, yeah 
Okay, so we're still not achieving the nice uniformity for the class 2, which is 0.7. And you can see this one is a V2 lump. So let's go back and check um, what if we change the lamp position into something else. So let's go to the website again and say this is a V2. And we will check the V, V1 maybe. Yes. Click that one. Transfer to dialogs and say OK. And then if I again change this one into V3, then it will be different again because see, you can see that the photometric um, diagram here becomes different. So let's go and check this one also. Maybe we can use the V3. So we need to understand all those lamp position. So it's not only the wattage but also the optic the lamp position, the type of the lamp, and of course, um, the total lumen output of the luminaire. So this one is a V2. Let's go and change it into maybe something like V1. Now it's 0.67. What if I change it into V3? That's worse. So V1 is better. Let's go and select this one. Now it's 0.67. And what if we change it also in V1? Uh, 0.68 how about V3 now it's 0.60 okay if it's if it's V1 then 0.63 okay and this one is also V1 if we change it into V2 0.65 V3 0.62 so both are V1 it's much better so now our uniformity becomes better now it's 0 0.68 and what and we used uh, v1 uh, v1 lamp position uh, later we will select only one floodlight for all and then let's see if the v1 will also achieve the same uh, lux value and uniformity for class class 3 so now that you can see that the highest part of the light Lumine uh, the lux value is here concentrating just below the floodlights and the lowest part is in the middle so now I think we can move our floodlight now closer to the middle this time okay so let's go and move it a little and then it becomes 0 0.67 so it's not good maybe we can move it only a little just a little now it's 0 0.69 and the high, the lowest part still there and what if we aim this floodlight a little to the center how it will be look like let's see make it maybe 89 if we made it 89 now it's not good if it's 91 not good if it's 90 now it's 0.69 okay little more okay so 0 0.01 more and we're almost done so we try to tilt this uh, floodlight towards the center let's do it again but it's not good it becomes worse actually so if we made it 90 again and what if i move this one into one now this is not good but if i move it into negative one not good <laughs> So, um, what shall we do now? Okay, so you can see that the concentration of light is just below the fitting. What if I change it into negative 7? Ah, perfect. And if it's negative 10? Worse, sorry. Negative 10. Oh my god, look at that. So, this floodlight is only five degree tilt sorry for that it's i am s sitting beside the check side road and some crazy people human being are riding their cars that crazy so um yeah so we made this one as five degree tilt and the v2 lamp is it v2 lamp sorry v1 lamp and then this one we made it as 10 degree tilt with again V2 lamp and now we got our 600 lux and 0.71 
this is actually now a class 1. So we don't have any more class 3. We go, sorry, we don't have any more class 2. We go directly to the class 3 and then immediately to the class 1. Okay, so now we are using how many floodlights? 2, 4, 6 floodlights per court and we achieved the class 1 and 3 uh, levels of illumination for a tennis court. So, for example, I remove this one. What will be the effect? Okay, it's still okay. This is for class 1. The class 1 requirements is 200 lux and 0.62. And class 2 is 300 lux and 0.7. So, it could be also a class 2, but the uniformity is not good. What if we try to move this fitting closer here? Now, it will affect the class 1. So, let's undo this one and let's, yeah, you can play that one later. So, but then it's okay now. So, there you go. Now, um, we're done. We achieved the last value for both the class 1 and then 3 and Two is just a uh, little uh, not achieving the uniformity but what but we also achieve this one let's go and calculate this all right so that's what I'm telling you that uh, either you will do uh, okay so this is the class 3 uh, see the concentration of light is here and this one is a little um, darker so but we achieve the uniformity so yeah, um, uh, you better check which is the best uh, way to do to give the calculation to the client, either by calculating both the tennis court or only this one, or you can also do like um, how many how many poles? Maybe six poles if you like, like like what our subscribers did. Or if you want to minimize the number of poles into four, then you can do this one. And of course, you want if you want to add the poles, you can do it here for your presentation. So that's it. And I hope you enjoyed this tennis court calculation design. And if you have questions, just let me know. And I hope to answer your questions as soon as possible. Thank you.